I feel like this almost reminds me of like um uh like a body spray. Glass B reminds you of a body spray? Like a Victoria's Secret body spray oh. that I asked my grandpa for in middle school. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey, by Michter's, and by Heaven Hill Brands. And joining the Fred Minnick Show is comedian Natalie Cuomo. How are you doing? It's good to see you, Natalie. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Look, you've been you've been tearing it up on the on the comedy circuit right now. Like how how's it been going? You know, what's it is 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 there a different feel right now for being on stage, you know, pr than prior to COVID? What's it like out there? Um, it's good. I I've definitely been feeling great after covid you kind of have a new appreciation for being on stage being in a live audience mm -hmm. definitely learn not to take anything for granted now do audiences react differently now or, or are they you know it's funny people people forget what they didn't have very quickly mm -hmm. it's kind of like when you get sick like when you have a cold and you're like oh my god i'll never forget how lucky I was to not have a cold. And then the second you're better, you don't think that way anymore. I do feel like audiences are, are a bit like that. Yeah. But um, so audiences are a bit the same in New York. But when, when I do leave New York and go on the road, people are very grateful for comedy. So you're saying that people in uh, New York aren't, are, not, are not happy. They're just miserable in a way. Well, that's kind of like the characteristic of New York anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my one of my favorite, uh, you know, li I'm not going to say the line because obviously it's it's your line. But uh, I've heard you say it a couple of times and it's been printed in, in some uh, some articles that you've been interviewed for. Uh, but so I'll just just throw it out there like, you know. What is the relation to the uh, to the New York governor, former New York governor, and that that entire political family? Oh yes, the line is I'm not related to Andrew Cuomo or that political family. My uncle did sexually harass some people, but he was never in office, so nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that poor uncle. Uh, but uh, you know, it's good to have you on the show. I know you have a podcast too, and it's uh, you know, podcasting seems to be the the way to go these days. And you know, on my show, um, we drank whiskey. So I love uh, it. What's your What's your whiskey background? Do you Do you sip a lot of whiskey? Is this something that you're you you do a lot with? You know, I tend to go for a mixed drink if I'm mm -hmm. being honest. But you know, my dad is very into spirits and liquors. Um, so I like whiskey. I mean, I like whiskey. I do. I think, if, I, but I, I can't lie. I don't have a refined palate necessarily for these things. Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully we will be able to, uh, to teach you a thing or two. Um, I love that. Now, you, you, received, uh, you received two... You received two bourbon or two whiskeys. You received a Michter's and a 291 whiskey. Those are for you to enjoy. You got a signed book, and then you have three samples that are simply labeled A, B, and C. And Natalie, how this is going to go is I'm going to do a little training exercise with you, and uh, we're going to you know learn how to taste like a pro. I'm going to teach you how to taste like I do, and then uh, and then we're going to jump in. And you're gonna taste them, and you're gonna pick your favorite. So now I have a question for you. Absolutely. I I worked in coffee for a while before okay. I when I was in comedy when I started comedy and before, mm -hmm. and I took it pretty seriously. It was like specialty coffee, so I did a lot of coffee cuppings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Are there any similarities between the way people taste whiskey and the way people taste coffee, and compare those flavor profiles and stuff like that? Yeah, and actually, some of the like bitterness, uh, some of the areas of the tongue that get lit up when you taste coffee, the bitterness areas, uh, those can be activated when you are tasting whiskey because the barrel, 
you know, puts out a lot of tannins and sometimes you'll get, you get a lot of bitterness that comes through. So you, and so sometimes you'll just straight up taste the coffee. And, and if you huh. developed, if you developed a palate for coffee, um, then you, you definitely, you definitely are ahead of the curve here. But I'll say too, <laughs> also like, it, it's interesting, like coffee has an effect on you, but also so does tasting whiskey. And that's one of the difficult parts about being a taster and whiskey is that you just got to be careful that you don't drink the whole damn bottle, you know, and you're a little, you know, you got to be, make sure it's a taste and you're not drinking. So that's, that's the difference there. And whereas like with coffee, you know, you get wound up and everything with, uh, with whiskey, you get like, woo, party. <laughs> so. <laughs> now, will you have a drink before you get on stage? So I typically prefer to perform sober. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm headlining, I will absolutely pre- not have a drink or smoke. But if I'm doing like a 10 minute spot, um, I won't. I, it'll be okay if I have a drink or if I have a little bit of weed before a set. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, now this is to me that's it's it's interesting because comedy, you know, drinking on stage is like part of the shtick for a lot of people and sometimes they're funnier when they're drunk you know so you know i actually so i actually know a lot of comics that do this thing where they'll go on stage it with a rocks glass with sparkling water or ginger ale or something and a and like a slice of lemon or lime in it to look like they're drinking so (laughs) because it's so much a part of the culture but um maybe they're sober maybe they don't perform well when they're drunk for me i feel like that sometimes when i drink there's like a layer of like kind of like tipsiness that comes over me where i can't relate to the audience as well some Uh but some people it makes them super loose it just depends on like the person you are i mean i love drinking i just you not at my job when I don't. <laughs> you're not. You're not out there picking a fight or or like you know calling exes or anything like that though. So I'm just silly. I'm just like a little too silly when okay. I drink. All right. <laughs> well, let's let's go ahead and start this, and uh, hopefully we don't get too silly here. I'm going to go ahead and pour glass uh, glass A. So grab glass A, and what I'll, I will tell you everything. After what they are after. Look at, my, look at my lovely glass. Yeah. I have to say, Fred, you are the only person that I will drink a mysterious liquid from a bottle labeled <laughs> A. Nobody else can send me a, a, a bottle that just says A on it and I will drink it. Yeah, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Do you? I, I do. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, this, this is some mysterious stuff here. Just yeah, as a. you know, a. it's just uh, it, it's it's the whole blind blind tasting concept, and you know, and and also like these are, this is this is like it's better in person, right? And uh, but it's you know we can we can make do virtually, but um, but yeah, I, I would say you know we're total strangers, and I would be. I'd probably be a little weirded out if somebody sent me some some random stuff. I will tell you, I get random stuff all the time. From I'm I'm on a show called Moonshiners. It's on the Discovery Network, and uh, Moon. After I'm on that show critiquing Moonshine, Moonshine will just show up on my doorstep. And do you drink it? You know, I'll smell it, and you know the the reason why you smell alcohol is is to make sure you're not going to go blind or. You know, it's going to be gross and uh, I'll, I'll smell it. And if it's tainted or it smells bad, I, I won't drink it. I mean, I might taste it, but um, usually, usually I don't. Is your nose that on point that you would detect something like that? Yeah, that's that's probably my gift. Like the, the tasting was trained, but I, I have a gift for my entire family on my mom's side can smell well, we have really good noses and, you know, I'll be walking with my wife in a store and I'm like, man, they, they wore way too much perfume or cologne or whatever. And she's like, what are you talking about? And then five minutes later, she smells it. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's, um, it, 
it's interesting, but I'll tell you, it's bad when you're on a plane. Lots mm-hmm. of stink on a plane. You know, people walking by you with their stink, and and then there's the bathroom that just keeps on stinking. So, it's a gift and a curse. It's it's a lot of curse and a lot of a gift for sure. My mother brags about this all the time. She can always tell when I'm smoking because of her nose. Yeah. <laughs> you, so you smoke like uh, regularly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this will. This is what's interesting. I have found that smokers have really good palates. Uh, really good palates. So oh. we might we might open something up with you today. I love that. I love All right. That. So the first step, what we're going to do here. So you got glass A poured. Okay. The first step, we are drinking. This is a this is rye whiskey. So the first step, take your glass, and and just we're just kind of looking at the color. When it went into the barrel, it was clear as the water from your tap. So looking wow. at looking at whiskey in a glass is you're looking just you're kind of enjoying it like the prisms of it um the color like this is a really beautiful russet color and it's kind of like looking at an album cover it gives you an idea of of the whiskey you're about to taste like an album cover will give you an idea of the music you're about to listen to swirled right. around let's kind of look at the legs there and then the legs it, so you'll see some when you when you look close to the glass, you'll see the little legs just like dripping, you know, down. Okay, yeah. That's that's like the residual oil uh, left from distillation and aging, and it's okay. just it's it's fun to look at, for me anyway. I mean, this is this is what I do for fun and uh, a hobby and for work. So I I have no life. I just drink for a living. Yeah, uh, that's fun. And so and now you bring it to your nose and smell. And when you smell, you want to smell with your mouth open, just a little bit like that. Okay. And and then go side to side. Wow, this is a lot. You can tell how much different it is when um, when you smell from side to side. Now you also you have a blindfold. Mm-hmm. Can you put your blindfold on real quick and go through the process? Try to smell. Do you like my display back here? It's lovely. That's great. Yeah, you uh, you've got a you've got a great setup. Knock it out of the park here. And the fact that you ha- you're a fellow Sure uh, microphone user is is where yeah. it's at for me. You know, best microphones Absolutely. in the business. I'm okay. So what am I doing here? So put your put your, put your blindfold on, and go okay. through go through the process of smelling, and you're taking your sight away. Okay. Open your mouth just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Kind of go side by side. What you're doing here is you are you are taking away one of your senses, and you're really focusing on really focusing on the on the smell. You're basically this is this is a form of like aromatherapy, in okay. in some ways. Does it smell different or come differently to your nose than when you had uh, when you had full use of your sight? Um, I, I feel like it has a little bit of a honey scent. Okay. So you pick up, do you pick up more when you had the blindfold on? Maybe a tad. Okay. Maybe a different part of the smell. So now, now the fun part. So this, first of all, there's no bad smells in this. You're spot on with the honey and there's like, uh, like an oatmeal kind of like rye toasted rye bread. There's a lot of, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of fun, like breakfast uh, smells in here for me. Okay. And oh, then, I, see, I I smell the breakfast. Brown this sugar. Is, this is a good breakfast, not the kind that you know you're you're hung over and you're having to go to Denny's because there's nowhere else to go. You know. Okay. Um. So this is the part. This is the part that I learned through through therapy. Like I I came out of Iraq and I was having all these issues and. Uh, I was introduced to aromatherapy and taste mindfulness, and what I learned was like our tongue acts differently in, in different parts of the tongue, and it connects. You, the best way to connect your brain to what you're tasting is to think about what part of the tongue it's it's populating, 
And so we get our sweet notes on the tip of the tongue. We get our savory notes on, in the middle. We get the bitterness notes in the uh, in the middle toward the back. We get our spices toward the back, and you'll also get bitterness on the sides of your tongue. So let's let's taste this one first and uh, just kind of uh, think about what part of the tongue is it populating. So here we go. I would say definitely that I feel there's some spice in there. Some spice. A little cinnamon. Do you some feel cinnamon, that on the, maybe? Do you feel that back of the palate? I felt the back and the tip. Okay. So nothing on the sides for me. So the the sweet note there, like so is there any kind of like sweetness? Do you get any of that honey? Yeah. That you smelled? Yeah. So let's let's taste it again and th really concentrate on the back of the tongue and think mm -hmm. about the spices that you've had in your life uh, that you enjoy. You called out cinnamon. Now really focus on that cinnamon. What kind of cinnamon? Is, is, is there an experience that you've had with cinnamon that it really resonates? Is there a holiday recipe? Is something there that really just jumps out to you? Is there a holiday recipe? Do you feel a, Do you feel a holiday recipe on your tongue? I can see that being a holiday recipe. But this is your palate. Like I can't tell you what to taste. That's the thing. Yeah, you, yeah. I you, feel. Uh, yeah. You You've got you You picked. You called out cinnamon here. So I'm trying to trying to Jedi bourbon you into like figuring out what that you know particular cinnamon note is. I feel like it's a little spicy and sweet. Not okay. spicy, but it has a little bit of a spice, like a, um, maybe like a tea, like a like an herbal spice tea. Got it. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good note uh, to throw in there, and very common for for a rye whiskey. And then, you know, after you after you swallow, like how long is it still on the tongue? Is it still on there quite a bit? Yeah, I would say, okay. and you feel it on your lips significantly. And that's that is the finish. So you have taste buds in your throat and in your belly. So if you feel it kind of on the way down, that's just a little bit of the whiskey hug there. So wow, yeah. So that is that is uh, that is how we taste. So how would you how would you rate this one? How do you feel about the the first whiskey glass A? How do you feel I'm about liking that one? glass A. Signif I'm significantly into this one. You really I like, like this one. one a lot. I okay. feel like this is very festive. Mm hmm. And the December is one of my favorite months, so I like this one a lot. Okay, I I feel like I'd enjoy it with a sugar cookie. Oh, very nice. Now I'll reveal what it is um, after we get through the other two, but um, now I want a sugar cookie. Like that sounds awesome with this. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can uh, I, I can have a sugar cookie on my diet though. You know. No. Yeah, I can't have one, but it sounds so yes, good. Yes, you can. So you're you are like a you are like a a goddess in the tattoo world. You know, I mean, you're you've been featured in a lot of um, you know tattoo magazines, and you know you're always talking about them. You're proud of them. You're proud of the ink. How many tattoos yeah. do you have? Probably like in the seventies or something. Do you have any tattoos? I do, uh, all the way on my back. So it's whoa, the, yeah, back spine. It's a. Uh, I have, I actually never see it, so I because I have to turn around to look at it. But I was in the um, I was in the army and I was in a fraternity house and like we, I uh, I when I got got this tattoo, it was illegal to get tattoos in Oklahoma where I grew up. So I had to drive to Wichita, Kansas 
uh, to get a tattoo. I, I just, it's crazy, but it, is it illegal to get a tattoo anywhere right now in the country? I don't think so. This is the 90s, so, I mean, it wasn't even wow. that long ago, but... Uh, That's crazy. What did you get it? What's a tattoo? So, I, I uh, it, the, the, the symbol had two parts, a two-part meaning. I am, um, I am a part Cherokee, you know, so I have a little Cherokee in my in my uh dna and that's that's what my family when we when people get together and they're like well what are you you know it's that's the one we kind of like uh claim to uh so the thunderbird was um was a part of that and that was also the part of my very first military unit so i got a thunderbird with uh with with three feathers and uh the three feathers is uh you know per three is my favorite number so that's it. Cool. Yeah. Do you have That's a favorite awesome. tattoo? Um, I don't know. I'm really into this butterfly in my hand right now, mm. and uh, I like this dragon on my thigh. But I've nothing that I'm too. I, oh, I like the spider web on my knee. But those are my typical answers. Spider web on the knee sounds cool. Like I, every time I, I see a spider web tattoo. I'm like looking at the people. I I hope I'm not like. Uh, I I want to go up to them and say like. Man, I love that. Can I look at it more? But I feel like that would be a little weird, you know. Just... No, <laughs> depends on the context. Yeah, yeah. It, it, how does, does <laughs> it, when someone says "nice tattoo" or "can I look at your tattoos"? Is that creepy? I mean, what's the protocol there for like coming up to someone and talking about their tattoos? I think it depends. It really depends so much on the context. Like sometimes it's okay, but. If you already are having a conversation with someone or if you mm -hmm. want to talk to that person, it's like really anything else. But if you don't want to talk to that person, it's annoying. It's it's really just like it's like any it's like a shirt. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's a, it's the same thing as anything. It's basically just about if you want to be talking to that person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I can see that. I can see that uh being it could be a conversation starter or it could be a get the hell away from me kind of thing. So yeah, I get it. Exactly. I get it. Now, are you uh are you a gamer? Do you play video games at all? I do. I am a, I do play video games. What's your what's your favorite video game these days? I've been very into Pokemon. That's my uh Oh yeah. It's my little Oh, the uh, uh Pichu, yeah. right? Little Pikachu action Pikachu, happening here. Yeah, my my yeah. boy, my boy's into Pokemon as well, and that seems to be Aww. that seems to be the craze. Like, uh, you know, it's sad he got he had his binders. Like, I got him like all these cards and built these binders for him, and they got stolen at uh, at camp. So he no, yeah. So I I had to do that all over again. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but apparently that's, that's the so thing to do up. though: S steal people's Pokemon cards at eight years old. That's terrible. It is terrible. Now, is there is there a Pokemon character you think that would like bourbon? <laughs> I was thinking Charizard would be a big bourbon drinker. You know, all the flames Why and such. That? You know, because he's you know he needs he's spits fire, right? So, so Charizard needs some fuel, and you know, bourbon is a flammable liquid. So. Oh, I can see that. I can see the fire Pokemon um, liking bourbon because it's flammable. I can see that. And then, like, the that. trainer would be, like, a bartender, like, coming over, like, mixing special drinks. And, you know, it would never happen, but it's uh, – that's, that's – That's that, interesting. That's my, that's my creation in my brain. So, I like that. Uh, let's go to glass, uh, glass B now. Here we go. It's a different glass. It's a different glass. That's a very good glass though for, for whiskey. It is. Yeah. That's a custom, that's a basic water glass and it has a lot of the same properties, but you know, no one makes small glasses like that anymore. That's actually my second favorite glass to drink out of. So really? very coincidental that you got that drink or got that, that wow. got that glass to drink out of. Huh. So, Natalie, remember your training? All right. What are you What are you picking up on the aroma? 
feel it's a less aromatic than than A. Okay. All right, let's put it on the palate and uh, and focus on what part of the tongue it's on. Mmm. Oh, interesting. Well, that definitely definitely comes forward with the sweetness, mm-hmm. and it spills over to the sides of the tongue. So a little bit on the bitterness side. So, do you get any fruit in this at all? Like, um, mm. like a berry. There's there's definitely some fruitiness here. You know, it's uh, and sometimes a, a fruit can just be like um, be like sweet. Uh, but sometimes it can be like pungent. Sometimes it can be savory. But mm. um. This definitely has has oh, a, like, yeah. a, like a fruity note to it. I taste a little strawberry element. Okay. Hmm. Strawberries sound good right now, actually. All right, before you said uh, a sugar cookie. Let's taste this one more time and, you know, think about what would you like to, you know, eat with this. I would have this. I would have this with a chocolate cake. Hmm. That sounds good. I love me some chocolate cake. Because there is a sweetness Mm -hmm. at the tip of the tongue. Spills over a little bit to the sides of the tongue. It's not in the back of your throat at all like the last one. Okay. And there's a lot on the lips. You do taste that once you said the thing about the berries, it feels almost overwhelming. It's fragrant. Mm-hmm. Now, now that you're two glasses in, do you find any similarities to coffee tasting? Well, I feel like with coffee tasting, there are there's similar things that you're comparing it to, like. Well, there is the thing with the tongue that they talk about. Mm -hmm. And then there's also like similar tasting notes, I think, with coffee and alcohol. Right. I feel like this almost reminds me of like um, uh, like a body spray. Glass B reminds you of a body spray? Like a Victoria's Secret body spray oh. that I asked my grandpa for in middle school. Okay. Well, this you is not to... a. This no. is the <laughs> this is the first time uh, a Victoria's Secret body spray tasting note has came onto the show. So you wouldn't you wouldn't believe this. I was in middle school and my grandpa wanted to know what I wanted for Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. And I told him I I didn't know what the word seduction meant. And there was a body spray called Pure Seduction at Victoria's Secret. And I asked my grandpa for Pure Seduction body spray from Victoria's Secret. I love it. Now, how did your grandpa take that? What was was the look on his face? You know, did he follow through? He followed through. He followed through. He was a good man. He was a good man. I gotta imagine he's walking in there. How old you were? You were twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, no, young. It was middle school, so it was like eleven, maybe. Okay, so I, I gotta imagine he's walking in there, and <laughs> all the workers are looking at him, and he's taking the risk of looking like the perv, you know, and getting <laughs> seduction body spray for his uh, middle school. I wasn't with it. It was just, it was like a gift later. You were with him. No, I was not with him when he went shopping. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, I mean, kudos to Grandpa. I mean, that's that's awesome. But it's also hilarious, you know, probably for you looking back. But uh, I didn't uh, know what the word meant. Well, now let's. It's it's a big word when you think about it. Seduction. You don't learn that word until you're in high school, really. True. And then you learn to master it at some point. But like, let's take, (laughs) let's, let's take a step back here in terms of like how it ends up as a tasting note. 
Um, I mean, did you? What did you drink the stuff? Was it something? Did you just smell it in in there, or did you you literally tasted the that seduction stuff in there? Or? It's very fragrant. Like it's very like it's like fra- it has like a fragrant. Okay. Like it has like a. I, it almost tastes like a. It doesn't. T- it tastes the way you would want it to taste. Like when you have a spray, and you're like, "Oh, I wish this tasted the way it smells," but no, it tastes like chemical. Got but it. if it tasted the way it smelled, it would taste like this. I'm tracking. All right. I love that first time that a Victoria's Secret tasting note has uh has entered the uh the whiskey tasting sphere so kudos kudos for that introduction natalie in fact you know from 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 here on out that'll be the uh natalie cuomo um tasting note there victoria's secret thank you i would might want to hit them up for like some uh you know for a collaboration or something like hey listen i I know how to get your stuff to taste like whiskey (laughs) (laughs) Put whiskey in it. <laughs> that would probably help them out a little bit, actually. All yeah, right, I so can. let's let's go to uh, glass C. All right. This will be our last of the three, obviously, and then we'll go back and taste all three again, and you have to choose a champion. Ooh. It's tough, but somebody's got to do it, right? I'm wildly intrigued by the hot sauce that you sent. Oh yeah, yeah. It's my little, uh, my little hot sauce collab I got going with Kentuckian. It is uh, the one I think I sent you is the medium, medium one, but the the lead pepper in it um, is cayenne. There's some Carolina Reaper in that and some jalapeno, and Ooh. it's so good. It's so good. You a hot sauce fan? I am. I like hot sauce. Yeah, it's oh wow. It's a good time to be a hot sauce fan. All right, what's this uh what's this nose picking up? a tough one would you like to see if I can steer you in a particular direction I'm not picking anything up at the moment it's it's my it's a fault of no one but my own okay well, let's let's go ahead. Maybe you get this whole Victoria's Secret thing stuck in your head, and you, we need to get to the yeah. tasting of it. And so let's that happens sometimes. Sometimes you need to you just need to get to yes. the palate and move on from the nose. But uh, let's go ahead yeah. and taste it. Mmm. My first thought, wow, was melon. Oh, a melon note. Mmm. This reminds me of like a high chew. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, do you get do you get any like uh syrup in this at all? Any maple syrup? Any kind of like uh like overarching sweet um you know that would caramelize if you put it in a pan or anything like that? <sighs> <laughs> you know what I do taste how it would be good on pancakes I do taste that and what I'm tasting is it kind of when you put it on your tongue it kind of jumps over the tip and it curls in the center and that's what I taste as the melon mm. do you know what I'm saying 
Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. You know, whiskey whiskey can move like that. You know, it's and it's it can be. And the thing is, everybody is different, and so what I taste is going to be different than what you taste. But I'm feeling just like having this little experience. Like uh, we've we're three gra- glasses of whiskey in together, and I feel like first of all, I think you have a very good palate. I think you're very. I think you could you could be a taster. Uh, oh, thank but you. I, but I think our palates are pretty similar, actually. Everything that you've been wow. describing uh, has been on track for what I'm tasting. And then when I've said something, you know, unless you're just being nice, you 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 uh, seem to have you know thought the same thing. And maybe what I said kind of pushed you over the edge a little bit there. But I want to throw a note at you. Um, it, just taste this again. Think of like a a, a a vanilla sundae with um, with chocolate syrup and nuts and a banana. Taste it again and, and tell me if if you do not get that note. Cause Is this the right one? You put it all the way in the back. Okay, cool. I taste the vanilla, almost like a vanilla extract. Mm-hmm. It's very smooth. It's very smooth. And I, I do taste that banana pudding kind of flavor, which is, by the way, my all-time favorite dessert. Banana pudding? Yeah. With like the vanilla wafer? Oh, yeah. I love that. I, the vanilla wafer would get like a little soft and like... You know, it'd be halfway in there, and like one, the the outer part is hard, and you pull out the vanilla wafer that's soft, and you have like the soft, crunchy, and then the smoothness of the banana pudding. That is an that is an incredible experience in a cafeteria. It's such a Fantastic. good experience. Yeah. Mm. It's very sweet. I'd say all three are very there I like them because they're sweet and none of them give you that that almost like screamy feeling that a lot of whiskeys give like in the throat kind of like the like a lot of whiskeys you drink them and you're like <sighs> none of them do that yeah well also we you know you're probably shooting those whiskeys you know we're tasting here and that could be a part of it but uh we we sent you some good stuff too. There's no uh, no rot gut uh, bottom shelfers here on this on this list, but you know, we must choose a champion. Uh, so let's go ahead and taste uh, all the way through these again, and uh, to, let you know, let's talk about them one more time and and pick your favorite. All right, so let me cleanse let me cleanse the palate. That's important. All right. So, what do I do here? Uh, do you still have your whiskeys? Yeah. Yep. So, start with glass A. Okay. Get back to it. See what you think. Has your opinion of it changed uh, after you've had the other two? This is. I forgot the word for it. It's not liquor. At like anise, maybe. Anise. Anise. Yep. Mm-hmm. kind of that it's very adult this this one like I, it's a very after dinner drink like is, i would this is I'd, the big I'd, kids I'd, table yeah i'd probably give this to my dad uh as like a gift for father's day mm-hmm. um it would not be my favorite because i as much as i love it i i like things to be a little bit sweeter all right but it is delicious it's a, it tastes a little bit more medicinal. Okay. But I so, do love it. There's there's a place for this in the liquor cabinet, but it's mm-hmm. not winning your palate today. So let's go back to glass B. Taste that one more time. That's up there. I'm gonna have to stop drinking whiskey after the next sip. That I'm a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, you only need one more taste uh, to make the decision. Exactly. 
So, all right, let's try. Um, that was the strawberry. Mm-hmm. That the strawberry it would go well with chocolate cake. Yeah, this got this is this is a really good, really good rye whiskey. Um, it's still on the palate; it's still tracking very nicely. But I have a feeling that when you taste C, uh, you're gonna have you know a different opinion of of C. I like now. B, and I like the way it lingers on the on the on the palate. Mm -hmm. Let me have a sip of water so I can I can clear for. Uh, yeah, we gotta cleanse that palate, and let's go to glass C. Oh, this is the nice. You, what I think about with this one is I am on a farm and it's my farm and I have a long table and on the table there's pancakes, ice cream, bananas. I look out the window, there are cows, my cows, grass fed, and I'll have a sip of whiskey as I look at them. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because there's a sweetness that almost funnels into your mouth. Not because of the shape of your tongue, but because of the way the whiskey just glides in. Mm -hmm. I think C is definitely my favorite. C is your favorite. Okay. It's a river of maple joy. A river of maple joy. You, yeah. are just a, you are just a walking encyclopedia of whiskey tasting notes today. I love this. So okay. you have chosen uh, Michter's straight rye whiskey a 10 year old this is a very hard to come by highly allocated uh, rye whiskey comes out once a year wow. and um, as you can see I don't have much left so it's uh, it is an absolute taster I love that one it is it was in my top 100 last year for whiskeys of the year uh, just a great great sip and whiskey now what was your second favorite What was that? Uh oh, I, the three. That, your what was your second favorite? I lost you there for a second. Oh. You're back. What is your favorite of the three? It would have been it would have been glass uh, C as well. Like I said, I think our palates are some simpatico here. So okay, cool. Minus the Victoria's Secret tasting note. I just just because I don't have experience with Victoria's Secret tasting notes, but. That's fair. It's very fair. I, I, I understand that. <laughs> so your second favorite was a glass B? It would be B, although I think if I were shopping, I would probably get A because it's different than mm -hmm. it's like it's more I would have a more versatile collection. Like if I was only gonna buy two, I'd probably buy A. Uh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I think I, B would be my second favorite. So that but I would, like. The, I don't know. Yeah. So it's it's a close call. It's a close call there. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, barrel rye, uh, batch three, and coming in. You know, let's just say that the barrel and this one was a tie, and then this one yes. was uh, a craft stiller in Colorado called AD Laws. So. The fact that this one f did so well for you, it, you know, it goes a long way for for this brand. So this is batch sixteen of Ad Laws' uh, rye whiskey, the Saint. Uh, That's Lewis. A. Yeah, that was A. Mm -hmm. ah. So there you have it. You you have a we've we've learned that you have a palate for tasting whiskey. You're good at it, and I think you should. I think you should continue your training. I think you should keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you for all of the wonderful whiskey. Absolutely. Well, I, I hope to see you in person one day, but tell everybody like how they can, you know, follow you, you know, where's your tour, where are you headed, you know, tell us, tell everybody what's cooking for you. Absolutely. You can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Cuomo underscore. You can uh, watch me stream on Twitch twitch.tv slash Natalie Cuomo. I have a podcast. It's called Help with Natalie Cuomo. You can watch those video episodes on Patreon, patreon.com slash Natalie Cuomo, or listen to the audio. Um, 
on anywhere you find podcasts. I'm going to be hitting the road. So I will be in Cape Girardeau next weekend. And then I will be in Toronto first weekend of July. Got a bunch of cool dates coming up in Boston, D.C., New York. As always, I'm at the stand. So check that out on my website, nataliecuomo.com. Awesome. Well, Natalie, thank you so much (laughs) for coming on. I'm looking forward to uh, staying in touch with you for your whiskey journey. And uh, we've already been together here for like 50 minutes. So it's, uh, um, I had no idea. Sometimes you just get to sipping whiskey and making a new friend and you just, you just lose track of time. And that's what happened here. So uh, it's great, great hanging out with you. Great hanging out with you. And <laughs> Thank you. You be safe out there, okay? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Cheers. And remember, vodka sucks. <laughs>